One last one before we get out of here. This is Rick from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is probably the fourth email I've gotten from Canada this month. I didn't know it was still legal to be a Christian in the right sense of the word in Canada. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Rick says, heard of a preacher by the name of Robert Morey, and he said that Arminianism is one stop on the bus ride towards atheism. Have you heard of Robert Morey? And do you agree with what he said? Have I heard of Robert Morey? Uh, yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> um, it's actually a, a buddy of mine. I view him as a, a mentor. He's a student of Walter Martin. And so if I'm a student of Robert Morey, who was a student of Walter Martin, that shows you a, a proud heritage and lineage as it relates to uh, apologetics, as it were, in uh, American Christian circles. Um, and I'm, I've paid a high price <laughs> in my life for being friends with him, but, uh, and I've got the battle scars to prove it, and if he's hearing this one day, then he's probably cracking up laughing just hearing that phrase alone. But in terms of atheism, and it's, uh, uh, what would he say? Robert Morey always says that uh, Arminianism is one stop on the bus ride towards atheism. Here's the deal. If you read any decent atheist uh, debater's handbook, for example, or an atheist arguing training piece of documentation, what they will tell you is that sometimes a Christian or a theist in a general sense of the word will be so committed to an ideology that they will have lost the intellectual debate but still cling to their belief system for some emotional reason. So rather than blasting them with absolute non-existence of God uh, and making a leap from belief in a particular specific definition to belief in nothing, uh, perhaps there's some steps in between. And so progressively you get them to abandon this piece of their faith and this piece and this piece and so eventually they're left with nothing. And so uh, when it comes to a definition or understanding of God, uh, what they do is they water him down. They give you a, a theological concept. The atheist does this. That uh, waters the, the God that you believe in down. Strip him away of this and this and this, this attribute, this piece of his essence, this piece of his nature. Uh, until eventually you're left with, well, you're, you're eventually in the neo-Orthodox uh, churches, the liberation churches, the gay churches, whatever, where there is no sin, there's, there's no uh, hell, there's no real reason to roll out of bed, you know what I mean? And so, as you're progressively watering God down, and you're removing certain attributes, obviously the removal of his sovereignty. What does the sovereignty of God mean? It's a two-word phrase. God rules. No matter what area of experience, observation, whatever, whether it's in the material world or outside of the material world, God rules. Period. End of story. The moment you deviate from a uh, sovereign concept of God to, well, God is sovereign over everything except the will of man. So God is sitting down looking, lo looking down on the earth and he sees, well, I tried to save Jimmy from the block, <laughs> but it just didn't work out. You know, the Holy Spirit is like, we try, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know what I mean? This God is powerless to save because the will of man was harder than the power of God. But also, uh, Joe from around the way woke up as a Christian, uh, believed as a Christian that at some point during the day, either he read the wrong comic book, he held hands with the wrong girl, whatever, had a, a beer or something, and all of a sudden he's not saved anymore. Jesus Christ was powerless to hold on to him. So you're redefining God as this God that's not powerful and not sovereign. Well, the will of man, man can choose to do this and choose to do that, and God's kind of rolling with the punches. 
you whittle that down. Then you get to such people as Greg Boyd, who uh, deny his omniscience. Well, God doesn't know everything. You know, he hopes. What is, what is the book of Revelation? Is it prophecy about things he's going to sovereignly bring about? No, it's his wish list. I hope this happens, but we don't really know when he's writing God of the possible and all of this crap. And um, the idea is that if God is not omniscient, he doesn't know what tomorrow is. So when he's looking at tomorrow unfold in front of his face, he's seeing it real time and he's learning. Thus, you have a God in process. That's why the leap from Arminianism to the open view of God down to process theology, then it's a step-by-step -step progression. So when Robert Morey comes out and says, uh, Arminianism is one stop on the bus ride towards atheism. He is absolutely philosophically correct. He's logically consistent, and it makes sense, brother. If you abandon a classic Protestant Reformed um, idea, definition, or concept of God uh, for the Arminian position, you're giving up a lot of omni-attributes uh, that make God who he is, and you're lifting man up to a higher level, by the time you, 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 know, you go down that, you follow it through to its logical place, all worldviews are not an end destination. They're actually a journey. They're going somewhere. So if I'm on Highway 94 from Minneapolis and I'm heading east, I can see signage. Hey, I just entered Wisconsin. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm on my way to Chicago or whatever. Chicago is not visible from my, my parking lot door when I leave in Minneapolis, but when I look at the signs on the side of the road, I can see in which direction I'm headed. And so uh, Arminianism is taking you somewhere. And that's why the atheists have gotten smart. You know, so instead of uh, there is no God leaping from I believe in Jesus Christ to there is no God, that's one heck of a leap. I might not be able to get you there in one conversation, but what if I can whittle it away over time, progressively, until you have no other alternative but to abandon God? Um, yeah, so um, I hope that clarifies the question. Yes, I know Robert Morey. I know him well. Um, one of my best friends, one of the only friends I've ever had that's never stabbed me in the back. Uh, heck of a dude, um, and I hope he stays on the earth as long as possible. Because when he passes from the scene, there's going to be a certain uh, caliber uh, of a mentality of apologetics that's going to leave the earth with him. Uh, and that's really going to be difficult for the church and the world to be without that kind of brain and that kind of voice. So yes, I know him and I know him well. And there's nothing he could ask me for that I wouldn't do, if you want to know the truth. But also in terms of his... Um, assertion that Arminianism is one stop on the bus ride in the direction of atheism. I'm in full agreement. Uh, every atheist uh, document or uh, decent book you read on it will tell you that, yes, this is it's part of the tactic. And so the very existence of Arminian theology uh, plays right into the hands of uh, militant atheistic type of people.